Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. This is Dominic Sicali, Mafia Roundtable. Thank you for all the love and support. It's greatly appreciated. Also, i like to thank our sponsor, EG Vodka. Go to egvodka.com, order your vodka today, and you will not be disappointed. 100% organic, excellent vodka, great taste in vodka. You'll really enjoy it without the hangover, hopefully. This story, I'm going to go back some time. This is when I got shot as a kid. Um, it has to deal with a dear friend of mine back then who's no longer with us, uh, Lenny Esposito, his cousin Blaze Rodolfo. And I'll start with how Lenny and I met. I was on Crosby Avenue in the Bronx. This is back, I would say, in the middle 80s, late 80s. And the guy, Joe Mahoney, owed me money. He bought some Coke from us. And he owed me money, so I happened to see him on the avenue. And I'm going at him verbally, like, I want my money. You've been ducking me, and Dom, I know, I know, I know. All of a sudden, bam, I get hit from the side. I had never even... Don't know who who hit me, where it came from. I stumbled about four or five feet forward, almost went down. Like I was down basically as if um, if you ever got hit in football and you're stumbling, but you don't lose your balance, you don't hit the ground, well, that's what happened. I regained myself, and now my head, everything's spinning. I'm shaking my head, got the cobwebs out, I turned around. And here's Lenny. Uh, I knew of him. I saw him before. He was basically from the Tremont area. I was from Pelham Bay. So right away, my hands go up. And now Lenny and I are going at it. Swinging back and forth. He walked into a jab. Boom. He went right on his ass. (laughs) Um, Now I'm feeling. Now my head's straight. Okay, now we're going at it. Missed a few punches. You know, we're going back and forth. Neither one of us had the advantage on on one another. All of a sudden, a cop is on foot. He comes in, breaks us up. Lenny keeps on running his mouth, going back and forth. Long and short of it all, they lock Lenny and I up. We go to the local police station. I think it was the 45th precinct. We go in, we sign out. And by the time we're signing out, Lenny and I are talking to one another after being handcuffed to a wall in the police station. We start talking, and we become friends with that. So next few times we meet, we're hanging out, we're partying, having a great time. And then this one time I heard that Blaze was having a fight with a guy named um, Guy Echo. This is His father was Johnny Echo. He was in jail doing time for a... Um, Excuse me, a drug conviction. So there's supposed to be a neighborhood fight. So, of course, I tell Lenny, I I have your cousin's back. When's the fight? He says it's going to be at Loretta's. Loretta's was a pizzeria in the Trogneck section of the Bronx. It was down by the water. And I said, all right, I'll be there. It was summertime. It's maybe about 7 o'clock at night. Still light out. Everybody's hanging out. And there has to be maybe about 100 people, well, all of us kids, young teens, hanging out, girls, I mean, it's just loaded with people. Everybody heard of the fight. Everybody wants to see the fight one-on-one with Blaze and with Guy. So we're hanging out, and Loretta's is basically, if you kept on walking towards the water, it slopes down, down a slight, slight embankment. So where we're at, it's level, and everybody's there waiting. All of a sudden, somebody yells out, there's guy at the bottom of the embankment, the hill, the little ravine, whatever you want to call it. Gets out of his car. Now Blaze is walking towards him. The guy comes out from the car. I'm behind Blaze in the group. Like I said, there was it's a neighborhood fight back in the day. Everybody's fighting with their hands. It's no big deal, but of course I'm with Blaze. Uh, even Guy, his cousin, his 
even his friends are all in the group. Everybody knows one another. So it's not going to, it's something that's not supposed to get out of hand. Lo and behold, guy pulls out a gun and starts firing. All of a sudden, I feel a pain. I dive. I'm on the floor. And maybe about four or five shots went off. There's no fight. Everybody's scattered. Guy leaves. I'm laying on the floor. I look down, and my ankle shot me in the ankle. Blood's just coming out. With my heartbeat, you see the blood pumping. So I tell somebody, just get a... um, Somebody have a belt. They tied the belt around my legs. Somebody had called the ambulance from their house or Loretta's. I'm not sure they went on a payphone. There's like chaos pandemonium going on. Everybody's screaming. And I hear somebody say, "Call the, uh, let the cops know. Let the." I said, no, nobody say anything. Just keep it at that. We don't know who did it. Um, and that's it. So they transport me to the hospital. I go into surgery uh, to take out the bullet. While I'm in the hospital, though, they're x-raying me. Now the x-ray tech is asking me questions like, hey, oh, what happened? You had a fight? Do you know who did it? I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I don't know what happened. And I'm just keeping it that. I don't know this guy. Number one, I'm not saying anything. All of a sudden, behind the curtains, I see the cops come out. Yeah, that's what I thought. So I have nothing to say. Well, you sure your life's... I have nothing to say. I don't know what you're talking about. They leave. I go into surgery, come out. Maybe about two surgeries later after that, I recovered. Uh, But I'm on crutches in the neighborhood. Now, maybe this made me gravitate more towards the streets. But I'm pissed. I'm pissed. My fucking leg is throbbing every day. Uh, because they couldn't stitch up the hole. It has to heal from inside out. And I'm just pissed. I'm on crutches. I'm going to kill fucking guy. I'm going after him. One of my boys get me a 38. I have a 38. And I'm going after him. So this one night. Uh, let me back up a little bit. Maybe that day. Earlier in the day. My father calls. Sends word. You have to come with me down to Harlem. We have to speak to somebody. I'm like, I'm not speaking to anybody. You're coming with me. You have to speak to somebody. I'm not speaking to anybody. Went back and forth. My father went down there. I left off. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll meet you down there. He went down there. I sent somebody there with a message. And the message was, the way it happened on the street, that's the way it's going to be settled on the street. And that was it. With that, I'm hanging out at the back of the building. I'm waiting for my friends to come. I'm going to go look for Guy. This is later on that evening. I'm strapped up. I have sweatpants on, guns in my waistband. I'm waiting there, sitting on the concrete curb. It's not even a curb. It's like an elevated uh, part where the fence is. I'm sitting there. All of a sudden, car stops short. Father and his friend, my father jumps out of the car. You little motherfucker grabs me, starts hitting me. My crutches go flying. My gun went flying in the street. And he saw the gun. He's like, oh, who do you think you are? And he's going off on me. Starts hitting me. And I'm like, I'm pissed. I mean, I'm so upset. Tears have come crying out of just frustration, anger. Like, you fucking piece of shit. Really? Really? You're a fucking punk. You can't do that. Who the fuck you think you are? They'll kill you. You're going to let them come kill me. Why? Because this guy wanted to pull out a gun on a street fight. And I asked acc- because he was claiming it was accidentally. Meanwhile, it was. Here's who got shot. A tree. A radiator of a car. And Dominic, the idiot. Now I'm the one who gets hit in the light, in the ankle. But it's still, it's a, it's a point of the matter. That's my friend, meaning the father. That's my friend. I know him. How dare you send him a message like that? With that, father leaves, and I'm just pissed. My friends pull up. Come on, let's get this motherfucker. Couldn't find him. And uh, with that, I'm just, I'm upset beyond, beyond words. And I never wound up finding Guy. That's the end results. 
I actually, I was at a park one day, Waterbury Park, and his cousin passed a comment I didn't like. Got out of the car, started fighting with his cousin. Um, bullshit fight. Wasn't anything dramatic, but um, wound up, nothing really happened. Wound up cracking him in the ears. His ears started bleeding. Nothing bad. And he was a lot smaller than me, so it wasn't even kudos. I wanted this fat motherfucker. That's what he was at that time. And how funny it is, because when I came home from jail, and then I was around Vinny, all of a sudden, I'm at Vinny's social clubs. He asked me to go check it every once in a while. I stopped by there. And then maybe a day goes by. Vinny says, Dom, what did you do? I'm like, what are you talking about? You have a problem with this guy, Guy? Oh, let me back up. I was straightened out by this time. He says, do you have a problem with Guy? I'm like, Guy who? Guy, the guy that shot you when you was a kid? I says, no. That Vinny even looked at me and says, you know you're in this life. You're supposed to forget about all past beefs. I said, Vinny, what are you talking about? So he says, well, guy said he saw you while you were checking on the, um, my club. And you looked at him and he feels like you're going to kill him. So he ran right away to Funzi, who's Alphonse Siska. He's a captain in the Gambino crime family. I said, is this kid out of his fucking mind? I don't even know what he looks like. Like, uh, no, I have no intentions. And let's go back to what you said in the beginning. Would you, even though it's irrelevant, I know it was an accident. I'm over it now. So it wasn't like he did anything intentionally. It was an accident. He was afraid he didn't want to fight. You just told me anything in the past. Would If you had animosity for somebody that they really did something, would you leave it? He goes, no, Bo, but I knew I had to push your button a little bit. And he starts laughing. I said, no, but this is how fucking scared this kid was, this man was of me. After all these years later, he still had in the back of his mind, I was looking to kill him. So, no, that wasn't the case. That wasn't the issue. So, with that, hope everybody likes the video. Um, the content we're putting out. And I'm going to be different. Everybody asks me to be more like other people. I have to be like Dominic Sicali. I'm my own man, always was. Hope everybody likes the content. I want to be different, keep it fresh, and uh, put out good quality. If you like this, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and don't forget, if you want a drink, go to eg.com, order your bottle of vodka. You will not be disappointed, I guarantee it. Everybody have a wonderful evening, morning, and afternoon. Peace out. Much love.